Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Illustration Masterclass. Today we're going to be looking at Roger Dean, and uh, this is going to be actually a pretty quick one today. Uh, real quick, I do want to let people know that are watching these master illustration uh, analysis. Uh, I have podcasts on this channel as well, where I interview different artists, and they talk about their process, and they talk about like how they were able to achieve what they're able to achieve. Uh, so, for example, there was a lot of people that checked out the Bobby Rebels uh, Master Illustration class episode that I put out last week. And I just want to make people aware that there's also a podcast with him that's available on this channel. And I have podcasts coming up every Friday with different artists in different fields. Uh, this week will be um, a Webtoons artist. So uh, make sure to hit the notification bell if you'd like to see that. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this. Um, now, Roger Dean, he's famous for doing a lot of album covers, and um, so I wanted to take a look at a few of his album covers and, and show some of the principles of design in his work. And as, as usual, whenever I first look at these, I like to pull back and I like to look at them from a distance and see the things that, look at the things it is that I notice uh, right away, just from a pure design point of view. Uh, they become more and more apparent as you pull back. So we have this horizon line that's right here. And notice that it's on the bottom third of the image. It's not in the middle, right? We could have put it here, but this would have been very boring uh, because it would have been evenly dividing up this space of the sky and the, the ocean here. Um, and so if that's what you're going for, if you're going for something that has a very static background, that, that might be the choice that you're making. Uh, but that's not the choice that he's making here. He's deliberately dividing this, this background space into, uh, into the bottom third for here. Uh, this also allows him to create space for these clouds up here. And it also creates this nice empty space here and this nice empty space right here is holding these different elements these fantastical elements which is really what it is that's drawn us to the painting and has given us this kind of otherworldly feel right is we have these floating islands of um, of land that are receding into the background and notice that you could almost look at it like uh, you're reading it almost left to right like a book or something, right? Like you could say that your eye starts up here and it goes down here. And you, you see this big shape here that's in the foreground, which is much darker than these other elements here. And it, it creates a frame that... that tells us where our eye is supposed to look. Um, it creates contrast between a foreground and a background. Like I said, this is, this is much darker. These shapes, these shadow shapes are much, much darker than uh, these shadow shapes. These shadow shapes are light blue. And why are these light blue, but these are dark? Well, the decision was to uh, of course, separate the, the foreground and the background, right? Uh, but the, the real reason is, is because the light from the sky is going down and it's hitting the water and then it's bouncing back up and hitting the, the underside of these islands, right? And so you get this nice mix. Whenever we zoom in, we can see that we have this nice little mix of blue and purple, right? Which is very, which is what accompanies the sky and then of course the water. The water has more of a purple tinge to it. And then what do we see when we look at these, this shadow? Well, we see that it's not completely black. You know, at first glance, we might look at this and say, oh, the shadow is completely black. It's not. Um, it's very warm, right? So we have a lot of red in the shadows. If he was to make this completely black, it would be very flat. 
and, and it wouldn't really read that well. Okay? You know, I mean, you look at this shape right here. This is a very, there's still color here. There's still like blue. You know, if you start color picking it, you can see that there's blue in it. So it doesn't go completely black. Um, but even, even though it doesn't go completely black here, you can still see that this is a flatter color than this color, right? Um, so th there's repeating elements throughout this piece that are leading our eye through it. So you could say this, whenever you first look at this painting, you see this overarching shape here, right? You see this overarching shape that's kind of, uh, it's creating a kind of a curve for your eye to look at. It's creating kind of this frame around here. And what, are, what is he framing? Well, he's framing this, this fantastical element of these islands here. Right? And these are much closer. And then these are a little bit further, a little bit further, and then furthest. And then he has these, these mountains in the distance which are basically fading away completely. Um, and so he's creating this sense of distance in this image. So let's go ahead and let's look at another one. And like I said, I think this is gonna be a pretty short one. So I think we'll, we'll just do one more. All right, he's got some storytelling elements going on in this one. But I really like this one, so let's take a look at this one. Uh, this is an interesting piece because again you can you can see different elements of different things the further you zoom out right um, he has he has these very I guess you could say they're very static architectural shapes that are going up like this and they're very you could say triangular like this right the base of them is very triangular um, and then when you zoom in, you can see that he's repeating these shapes in the texture of the building itself. All right, so this goes back to the idea of big, medium, and small shapes. You want shapes that, you want to take a triangle shape and you want it to have uh, repeating shapes, right? So you, you could imagine that this is almost a base of a triangle that this entire thing is based off of. But then when you look closely, you can see that it's also made of a lot of smaller triangles, right? These are all individual small triangles. And so he's using this element of big, medium, and small uh, to, communicate, to communicate this, but also to to uh, make the image feel like it's cohesive, right? And in order to contrast against that element, he's incorporating this kind of zigzag tree here in the foreground. So he's got this element that's very natural and very familiar to us in the foreground, and then he has this very unnatural kind of fantastical element in the background. And that seems to be something it is that he plays with. He plays around with uh, anchoring your attention with something that you're already familiar with, like a tree. And then he adds in a fantastical element in order to contrast that. And just in that same way, he's using contrast between uh, the very light blue of the buildings in the background uh, with the darker, warmer shadow colors that are in the foreground of this image in the in the tree and the in the sh in the shadows on the rock and rocks and whatnot. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and conclude it here. Um, I am going to be opening up a uh, mentorship for those that are interested. You can check out my information in the description box uh, for people who want one-on-one. -on -one. I'm also going to be putting stuff in my Patreon. That's going to be exclusive for people that subscribe for five bucks a month and uh, I'll have tutorials and things like that up within the next couple of weeks as well uh, so please if you if you like these videos if you find them useful like subscribe share them if you if you'd like to and uh, thanks for taking the time to watch this
I hope you got something out of it. Thank you.